Hello friends, this video on NEAT Ecology is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us quickly look at some of the adaptations of hydrophytes. Now what are hydrophytes? Hydro means water. So the plants which live in water. Now these hydrophytes can be of many different types. For example, some hydrophytes might be free floating that they that is they float on the surface of water. Some of them might be submerged where they are completely un underwater. So you know different types of hydrophytes exist. Now what we are going to look at right Right now is uh, how do they adapt to an environment where they have so much of water all around them. So let's quickly look at some of it. So the first adaptation is poorly developed or no roots. Now in most of the hydrophytes they do not have roots. In some of them though, though they have roots but they are like very poorly developed roots and in fact there are certain hydrophytes where the roots are present only for the purpose of balancing the entire plant so let us uh, talk about some examples of hydrophytes where we see these types of roots for example uh, certain hydrophytes where roots are absent like utricularia wolfia so these are examples where roots are absent. Now examples of hydrophytes where roots are poorly developed. That would be Hydrilla, Valisneria, Now, if you talk about hydrophytes where roots are used only for the purpose of balancing, then uh, the examples would be Lemna, Pistia, Icornia. Now why I am writing down these examples is because often in your uh, exams, in your especially in your competitive exams, uh, these questions might come up with examples like they give you an example like Pistia and they ask you the type of roots that they have or they uh, they give you an example they give you example of many plants and they ask you in which of these plants roots are absent. So that way the examples are going to help. So you need to remember these examples for uh, various categories. Now moving on to the next adaptation, they have poorly developed or no xylem. So again, xylem are the vascular tissues which are primarily needed for conduction of water and minerals. But in this case, the plants are adapted in such a way that they are already in water. So their vascular tissues are poorly developed. So in many of the plants, they do not have xylem at all. For some of them, even they have it, they are very poorly developed. Hydrophytes have mucilage covering. So what is mucilage? So mucilage is like a viscous fluid or a viscous secretion. And why do you, they have mucilage? Because this viscous fluid on the surface of the plants help them to protect against pathogens and animals because it is a viscous kind of fluid. So if somebody tries to attack the plant, you know, it, it's very sticky. So that way it protects the plant from any kind of attacks. Presence of Arenchyma. So what is Arenchyma? So Arenchyma are specialized cells of parenchyma which are used for air storage. So they help in gaseous exchange. They also help, in trans help to transport oxygen from the photosynthetic parts to the non-photosynthetic parts of the plants. So they are main. So you can remember them as air storage parenchyma. So the name is similar to parenchyma. So air in parenchyma that's arenchyma so they are for air storage and their one primary fun function is exchange of gases the next adaptation is thin small and finely dissected submerged leaves whereas large wa waxy floating leaves now as i said that hydrophytes can be of many types some of them are floating some of them are submerged so different plants have different types of leaves so for plants which have submerged leaves they are smaller in size they are also very thin and they are also dissected so that you know they kind of get submerged inside the water Whereas if you talk about the floating leaves, normally the floating leaves are quite large in size. At the same time, they have 
uh, a waxy layering on their surface. These floating leaves also have stomata which helps in gaseous exchange. So floating leaves have stomata for gaseous. What is, what is stomata? The tiny pores which are present on the leaves. Now in this case the floating leaves are in contact with the air that is the atmosphere because they are floating on the surface of water. So they have stomata through which they undergo gaseous exchange. Now you might come across plants which have both floating leaves as well as submerged leaves. So that is also possible and this phenomenon is known as hydrophily. So hydrophily refers to the phenomenon where a plant has both floating leaves as well as submerged leaves. So they have both these kind of leaves, the thin small leaves as well as the larger uh, waxy leaves. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.